My name is David Ensill. I'm a researcher and author of Chance Brothers Aesthetic. We have here some examples of laboratory glass, which is made with borosilicate glass, a very special glass mix, which had a very high uh, melting point for obvious reasons. Uh, for example, here we have the conical flask and beakers, or with the high seal brand, which is the brand name that Chance used. Uh, also we have microscope slides and also even a cover, cover slip which is a very very thin piece of glass so thin it can actually bend. Here we have a piece of umbrock glass, optical glass, that was uh, specially made in platinum crucibles, platinum lined crucibles. Uh, it had to be made over several days uh, to make sure that no impurities existed, for example air bubbles, striations, and uh, any other sort of contamination uh, like inclusions. So this was branded Umbrock and was made uh, during World War II in conjunction with Pilkington Brothers. Uh, the idea of the Umbrock Shadow Factory, as it was called, was in the event that Chance Brothers was bombed, then Pilkingtons could carry on making the, the, the optical glass. And in fact, as it turned out, Chance Brothers was bombed although not severely, but badly enough. Moving on to the interchangeable glass syringe, which Chance made in 1947. These were very special because prior to this, the barrel and the body had to be kept together when they were being sterilized. And if they ever got uh, mixed up, then the plunger would not fit the barrel properly. So the tolerances involved are incredibly small to make that work as a syringe without leaking. Next we move on to the roll plate glass that Chance produced. Uh, this box is a tradesman's sample box and dates to about 1933. Now we know that because some of the textures here, for example the crevasse texture, uh, is very much Art Deco influenced. The roll plate glass also included items like wired glass which was made specifically so that in the event uh, of it breaking it would not shatter into a million pieces it would stay more or less integral with the wire um, making it especially useful for uh, factory rooms in particular where the workers could have more light to work from uh, and in particular during the wartime it became very very useful as you can imagine Apart from rolled plate glass, which was Chance's mainstay of operation from about 1880 until they closed in 1976, the other glass they made, which was flash, flash ruby or flash blue, as we see here. Now these were made by uh, originally blowing cylinders of glass, which had a very, very thin layer of ruby or blue glass uh, to give it the colour which obviously made it cheaper to produce as well because ruby glass was quite an expensive process. Uh, they also made solid colours such as signal yellow and signal green which were used for maritime and uh, railway purposes, signalling lights. Uh, and also we have here Calorex which is a uh, glass which allowed uh, the light through but reduced the heat making it very good for use in tropical uh, countries. Later, in 1955, Chance Brothers started producing the handkerchief vase. Now, the very first model I made, which was only made for about one or two years, was formed from a circular blank of glass. This one is actually decorated with the swirl pattern. Now, the swirl pattern was in use right up until the 1990s. It was so popular and uh, it certainly fitted in with the 1950s and the 1960s. These were made, as I say, from a circular plate of glass, printed, and then placed onto a mould where it would slump to this shape. It would also fire the enamel paint onto the glass, so it'd make it very tough. They also produced ruby glass, uh, flash glass again. Uh, this is an example uh, with a gold rim. And from 1955 or 56, sorry, they started producing square uh, handkerchief vases formed from a square blank of glass. 
This in particular is called Cut Pearl, which is <clears throat> opal flash glass on top of clear, and then cut through to reveal the clear glass underneath. Again, it was slumped from a square piece of glass this time, uh, heated up to about 650 degrees to make the glass malleable but not melted. Later glass, this one in particular, as we can see from the label, was made in about 1969. Um, this was made again from textured glass. This is the Arctic texture. Uh, this is the four inch model and always denoted by the height, not the width or anything else. It's denoted by the height. Again, formed from uh, a square piece of glass slumped over a former. Chance Brothers did not also uh, commit itself to making lighthouse optics, but used the optical uh, designs for other uses. Uh, this gives us an example of how the light would have been bent uh, through this particular shape. This would have produced a parallel beam, much in the same style as a lighthouse optic. Um, we know this is made by Chance Brothers because it has acid stamped on the side CB Limited 1944 um, and even the part number 199B. So this would have been made for wartime use to keep uh, beams parallel but not actually shine outwards. If I had to pick any piece of Chance glass then it would have to be well, either the cut pearl handkerchief vase, very rare, purchased online. Uh, or the, the box of tradesman samples, which really do give us a history lesson on textured glass. You can just go through any one, pick one at random, and there we have it. We have uh, figured and rolled Montine texture. I started collecting chance glass uh, more by fluke than anything. Uh, I was a member of an online forum called the Glass Messages uh, Forum. And somebody had remarked that Smedic Heritage Centre actually had examples of chance glass there and could somebody go and investigate it, so a muggins here volunteered. When I went along I saw that there were examples of chance glassware that my mother had, in particular the Britannia uh, pressed glass, which was such a devil to clean after it had been washed. Uh, these were uh, dinner services and uh, such. Um, from then I started taking more of an interest in uh, chance glass and the very first piece I got was in fact oops, uh, a piece of swirl which uh, really intrigued me. Chance would also make promotional wear and these cards for example which have a um, glass blower on one side blowing a, a disc of crown glass and a lighthouse on the other uh, these had been given out to uh, by tradesmen to their uh, customers as a little sweetener or a Christmas present. I first started collecting chance glassware about 2005 after visiting the Smith Heritage Centre. The swirl pattern in particular did intrigue me and I've really been collecting ever since. I first published a book in 2007 called Chance Expressions. Uh, which detailed all the chance glassware I thought at the time. I then had to produ produce another book which was published in 2014 called Chance Editions. Now the reason for the period of time in between of seven years was mainly because the chance archives which were held in St Helens by Pilkingtons weren't terribly accessible and when they were moved in 2010 down to Sandwell Library this enabled me to investigate and in, uh, really go through the archives to find out, uh, well basically to paper over the cracks of the first book. This is an example of uh, a mirror, a parabolic mirror produced by Chance Brothers. Uh, it's actually uh, labelled on the back and dated 1929 which was made for the Admiralty and it's pattern 8248. Uh, this would have been used to concentrate a, a source of light into a parallel beam, um, would have been used during World War I and World War II. Uh, this example was obviously produced into war and would have been used to uh, detect zeppelins in the First World War and uh, fighter aircraft in the Second World War and obviously used uh, by the Admiralty on their ships as well. 
I was very fortunate to find this on uh, a, a very popular online auction site and it will be donated to the Smethwick Heritage Centre and the Trans Glassworks Heritage Trust jointly. So I was very pleased to get hold of it and very pleased to donate it as well.